If you want to know how Courtney Whitmore went from relative obscurity to having her own TV show, and how she's carrying on a tradition of heroism that stretches back a solid 80 years, keep watching to learn the real truth behind DC's Stargirl. Courtney Whitmore carries on a legacy that goes all the way back to the 1940s. Before she was Stargirl, Courtney was the Star Spangled Kid. That identity once belonged to Sylvester Pemberton, who made his debut in the pages of 1941's Star Spangled Comics No. 1. He and his sidekick, Stripesy, Stars and Stripes, get it? Were a patriotic take on Batman and Robin, a fabulously wealthy crime fighter and his sidekick. They had no superpowers, just a talent for hand-to-hand -hand combat and a cool car. The twist was that the kid was the hero and the grown-up was the sidekick. Sylvester was the teenage heir to the Pemberton family fortune and Stripesy was Pat Dugan, his chauffeur. The duo started going through some rough times before the end of the decade. They were eventually shoved out of their own book by a character who was introduced to be their sidekick, Mary, the girl of 1,000 gimmicks. Stripesy would fall by the wayside as the years went on, but Sylvester would have a much more tragic end. For characters who had their origins tied to World War II, it became increasingly difficult to explain why they hadn't aged over time. Captain America, for example, had to be a man out of time, frozen in a block of ice for however long it's been since the war. The Star-Spangled Kid, Stripesy, and the other members of their super team, the Seven Soldiers of Victory, all got caught in a time warp back in 1948. When they emerged in the future, Sylvester took the name Skyman and began using a cosmic converter belt that gave him superpowers. He teamed up with the children of some characters from his era to form a group called Infinity Inc. In Infinity Inc. number 51, a villain called the Harlequin, not the one you're thinking of, and Solomon Grundy crashed a wedding, literally. In the ensuing fight, Grundy grabs a hero called Mr. Bones and shoves Bones' hand against Skyman's face. Among Bones' superpowers was cyanide touch that killed instantly, leaving a distinct burn on his victims. So Pemberton got his face burned off. And while that's probably the most metal way to die, it's also a sad end for an obscure hero. In the 90s, there was a trend at DC Comics of dusting off long-forgotten heroes and breathing new life into them. And Starman, by James Robinson, Tony Harris, and Peter Snayberg, was the highlight of the decade. The name Starman had been used several times at DC over the years, starting with Golden Age hero Ted Knight, who used a cosmic rod to fly through the air and zap bad guys. 1994's Starman picks up with his son, David, who carries on his family's tradition of heroism for roughly 45 minutes before being shot and killed on his first night as a superhero. The legacy then falls to Ted's other son, Jack, a sullen hipster who, at least at first, has absolutely no interest in becoming a superhero. The series unifies all the different Starmen, including two different alien princes, a teenager from the 31st century, and some dude from the 80s that nobody liked, into the same legacy. And Jack upgraded the flashlight-sized cosmic rod to a five-foot cosmic staff. Eventually, he finds himself raising his own son, which leads him to retire from the superhero business. He also meets a young woman named Courtney Whitmore, who had no relation to the Knight family or its legacy, not yet, anyway. Remember Pat Dugan, the bumbling but ridiculously strong grown-up sidekick Stripesy? Well, it turned out that in the years since he'd returned from being lost in time with the other soldiers of victory, he retired from superheroics and settled down with a woman named Barbara Whitmore. That's the basis of Stars and Stripe, a 1999 revival of The Star-Spangled Kid by Jeff Johns and Lee Motor. When Dugan's stepdaughter, Courtney, discovers the relics of his superhero past, she steals the cosmic converter belt and goes into action as the all-new Star-Spangled Kid, initially motivated purely by a teenage rebellion. To keep tabs on her, Pat deploys a secret project, a massive suit of robotic power armor called the Special Tactics Robotic Integrated Power Enhancer, or Stripe. With that, the classic duo was reunited in a brand new form, though the series sadly only lasted 14 issues before being cancelled. It would have been easy for Courtney Whitmore to fade into obscurity after the end of her series, but she managed to stick around. Like most throwbacks to the Golden Age, she wound up joining the Justice Society of America for a while, serving as one of the few younger members tasked with hanging out with crime-fighting senior citizens. While she was with the Justice Society, Courtney got caught up in the Sins of Youth crossover that ran in Young Justice. The basic idea was that heroes swapped ages with their sidekicks, 
So the Justice Society, as the oldest heroes, became a pack of troublemaking toddlers, while Courtney herself was aged up into an adult star woman who had to keep track of them all. During that time, she made use of Jack Knight's cosmic staff. In the final issue of Starman, Jack Knight tied up all the loose plot threads that had been running through his book for the past seven years, including passing on his own legacy to the next generation of heroes. Jack and Courtney had never really gotten along, given that their teenage rebellions took them in opposite directions. But the glimpse he got of Courtney in Sins of Youth made him realize that she was the person who should be carrying his legacy forward. So when Courtney returned to her correct age, she left the identity of the star-spangled kid behind, taking up Jack's cosmic staff as Stargirl. When she was part of the Justice Society, Courtney met and began a romantic relationship with one of the most notable icons of the Golden Age, Billy Batson, once called Captain Marvel, but better known these days as Shazam. It's me, it's Billy! It's Billy! You asked me, flight or invisibility, and I thought that was stupid, but now I look like this and I The issue here was that Courtney was 16 years old, for the readers, that's not actually a big deal at all. We all know that Billy is also a teenager and that it's just the magic word and the thunderous boom of lightning that gives him the body of an adult when it's time to do magical superhero stuff. But the rest of the Justice Society was completely unaware of this fact. Courtney herself only found out when they were on a mission together that saw Billy briefly lose his powers. So to their teammates, it seemed a grown man with Superman powers was dating an underage girl. Jay Garrick, the original Flash, confronted Shazam about the relationship in JSA No. 59. Rather than just telling Grandpa Flash what the deal was, Billy decided that it was better to destroy his reputation and just quit the JSA to keep his identity a secret from some of the most trustworthy heroes of the time. He also broke it off with Courtney, explaining that while he truly cared about her, he didn't want to run the risk of having the team treat him poorly because he was a teenager. He wasn't exactly using the wisdom of Solomon right then, it seems. For a relatively obscure cult favorite character, Courtney Whitmore has made a surprising number of appearances in the world outside of comics. That may just have something to do with how Jeff Johns went from writing the short-lived Stars and Stripe comic to serving as chief creative officer of DC Entertainment from 2010 to 2018, where he took a very active role in shaping the film and television side of things. Both Courtney and Pat Dugan showed up on Justice League Unlimited alongside the other modern incarnations of the Seven Soldiers of Victory. For the record, I don't have powers, Potty Mouth. It's the staff. As a solo act, Stargirl has made appearances on multiple animated series. She was briefly seen on Batman, The Brave and the Bold, and more recently, she's been featured on Justice League Action and Young Justice Outsiders, although she's not a superhero in that last one. Instead, she's the host of a celebrity-focused TV show called Stargirl. In live action, Stargirl played a big role in Smallville's two-part Absolute Justice event, which dove into the history of the Justice Society and the idea of Clark Kent carrying on a heroic legacy that dated back to 1940. In that world, Courtney took the identity of Stargirl after Sylvester Pemberton was killed, with the idea that he'd been part of a team of heroes who were branded as criminals as part of a government conspiracy. In a truly wild departure from her comics history, Stargirl showed up on Legends of Tomorrow where, like on Smallville, she was tied to the Justice Society. But on Legends, she wasn't a legacy character. Instead, she was a founding member back in World War II, essentially replacing both Sylvester Pemberton and Ted Knight in the Arrowverse's version of that era. Here's where things start to get weird, even by superhero standards. First, we have to talk about the Spear of Destiny, which is supposedly the spear that a Roman soldier named Longinus used to stab Jesus during the crucifixion. Understandably, it's become a legendary artifact with powers and superhero stories. For example, in DC continuity, Hitler's possession of the spear gave him the ability to mind control anyone with powers, explaining why the superheroes didn't just go win World War II before all the bad stuff happened. On Legends of Tomorrow, the spear was so powerful that the heroes broke it into four pieces and scattered it throughout the time stream. Stargirl wound up taking a fragment of it back to the 6th century, where she landed in Britain, hid her piece of the spear inside a sword that was itself inside a stone, and then helped King Arthur found Camelot after taking the name Merlin. Merlin? Just an identity I adopted to fit into this era. Though the legends offered her a ride home, she ended up staying in the past because she'd fallen in love with Arthur. 
Going back to Camelot and becoming a mythical wizard is certainly a long way from her adventures as a high school hero. In 2020, Courtney is set to finally get another shot as a starring role, but not in comics. Instead, she'll be featured in Stargirl, a live-action show in the DC Universe streaming service, with episodes also airing on The CW after they premiere. It's not to be confused with the Disney Plus series curiously of the same name. Produced by Jeff Johns, who's also writing the pilot, the show seems to be sticking a little closer to the original comic than the one where Stargirl goes back in time to become Merlin. This time, Courtney Whitmore, played by Breck Bassinger, is a high school student who discovers that her stepfather used to be a sidekick, and she decides to raid his stash of equipment to take up the family business for herself. In addition to Courtney and Pat Dugan, played by Luke Wilson, the show is also set to include a handful of members of the Justice Society, including Wildcat, Our Man, and Dr. Midnight, with community star Joel McHale as Sylvester Pemberton. The one big difference is that the show looks like it's skipping over the star-spangled kid identity, with Pemberton having been Starman back in the day instead. Whether it'll pick up on other members of Stargirl's supporting cast from that original comic, like her high school rival, Cindy Berman, who became a supervillain named Shiv and gave Courtney the closest thing she ever had to an arch enemy, remains to be seen. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about superhero TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.